2023 saw us have more cozy games than we have ever seen before. And although 2024 doesn't look to have quite so many so far, I think the cozy games that are lined up are better and stronger than ever. So today I'm going to tell you about 25 cozy games that I cannot wait to play. And for the most part, all of the games I mentioned today are confirmed to be coming to the Nintendo Switch. There are just a few exceptions that haven't really given us that sort of information yet, but I will make those clear. Starting off this entire video is one of my personal favorites. This has to be one of the upcoming games I am the most excited for, and this is Ages of Kataria. Now this is already confirmed to be coming to the Nintendo Switch, but all we know so far is it's coming out on PC in quarter one, 2024. This is a village story generator and it's based on the land of Kataria, a place that is scattered in ruins from a once great civilization. And this will see you begin to rebuild the area once again. But not only will you get to design the town of your dreams, you'll also get to craft your very own origin story. As from the start, you get to pick your ancestry, be it a human or an elf, and this determines what your villagers can craft and what kind of lifestyle they have. But the best part about this life sim is that you're not just limited to one lifetime as you get to follow generation after generation of townspeople. And with there being mini games, story quests for each of the generations of characters and decorating, there will be more than plenty to do. The thing that excites me about this is it's a cozy game that just does so much more. And I think this is gonna be the theme of 2024. Next is Tavern Talk. Now you guys know that as soon as I see a visual novel, I have to talk about it. They're some of my absolute favorite genres of game, and this looks to be incredible. This is a visual novel game that is heavily inspired by D&D, which given my recent obsession with Baldur's Gate, I could not be more excited to see it. In this, you are the owner of an inn, a popular place for the inhabitants of Asteria to come and grab a drink. But much like Coffee Talk, this is set in a fantasy land, and the drinks you make can serve to change your customer's fate forever. One thing that makes this really stand out though is the fact that you can use the rumors that you hear from other customers and visitors to create quests for your brand new guests to go on. And like all visual novels, the strength of this game is in the storytelling you gather from the conversations with your customers. These types of games consume my entire life when I get into them and I cannot wait to do that with this one. Next we have Chef RPG. Is it slightly optimistic to think we'll see this in 2024? Probably, but for this list, I'm just going to live in my little delusional land and manifest that it's coming out this year. In this, you are a traveling chef who's been tasked to revive a once famous restaurant, and it will see you settle down and begin your brand new life in a town called White Ash Harbor. But in this life sim, your decisions have consequences, as it will determine what kind of chef you'll become with the addition of experience points that allow you to unlock special abilities. But in order to run the restaurant, you first need to gather the ingredients. And you can do this by fishing, hunting, foraging, or even farming. Now, as you guys know, restaurant management sims are some of my favorite genres of game and it's such an underutilized one. So I cannot wait to see what they do with this one. And I also love the fact that although this has elements of farming in it, it's definitely not a farming sim. And this is what I want to see more of in 2024. Next is Camper Van Make It Home. Now, if you're a lover of unpacking, then this is going to be exactly what you're after as this is a tale of self-discovery as you decorate and create space for all your belongings in your very own camper van. And it appears to be the perfect mix between everything we know and love from unpacking, but also a little bit of a little to the left as well, because it will see you organize and interior design as you go and allowing you to even customize different pieces to your own taste and style. As you journey, you'll get access to different types of vans and you'll even be able to adapt them for different destinations. And if that's not enough, you can also decorate the outside area as well. But by far, one of my favorite parts is the fact that you get to pick your very own pet who can accompany you throughout the entire journey. And as a cat mum myself, I love being able to add my own cats into games. Next, we have Snuffkin at the Melody of Moomin Valley. Despite the fact that I know absolutely nothing to do with Snuffkin, 
This is one of the games I am also the most excited to play this year. Not only is it confirmed to be coming to the Nintendo Switch, but I played the demo last year and was absolutely hooked. This is a musical adventure where you try and restore balance back to Moomin Valley by getting rid of the horrible park set up by the park keepers. This will see you sneak around behind their backs as you remove signs, kick over statues, and return these areas to nature and the adorable inhabitants of Moomin Valley. This truly has a little bit of everything, with puzzles, some of which are music-based, a beautiful story, and an animation style that is just wonderfully whimsical. I think this is going to be a lot of people's favourite cosy game. Next up is Botany Manor. Now this originally was coming out in 2023, I think it's been well over a year since we saw this first trailer in a Nintendo Indie Direct, but it now has a release date of spring 2024 on both Nintendo Switch, PC, and other consoles. This is such a unique spin on what is essentially just a puzzle game, as this is set in a British manner where not only can you explore, but you also come across various different plants, and it's your job to try and find their ideal growing conditions. But you won't be doing it from blind luck. Instead, you'll be able to find various clues, be it posters, pictures, or postcards scattered around. Around, each of which will give you a snippet more information on how to grow the plant and then it's up to you to run around the manor and find a place in which these ideal conditions can be met. But not only will you be carrying out these different puzzles, you'll also get to learn about the life of Arabella Green, a retired botanist. Now I must admit, when I first heard about this game, I wasn't all that excited, but then I played the demo and absolutely fell in love with it. These types of puzzles are so inspired, so unique, so different, that I had nothing but the best time while doing them. Next is Cozy Grove 2 or otherwise called as Cozy Grove Camp Spirits, which they have called a spiritual successor to Cozy Grove. Now, considering this is coming out on mobile in spring later this year, we know surprisingly little about this game. Now, I will be honest, we don't know if a Nintendo Switch port is on the horizon. Mobile is the only platform 100% confirmed, but seeing the success of Cozy Grove on the Nintendo Switch, I'd be surprised if we didn't see it at some point later this year. But if you do have a Netflix account, then you'll be able to play this for free from day one. But I can't wait to see how they build off of what they did in the first game. The foundations are really solid. There are a lot of things I really loved about Cozy Grove. And seeing as it's going to be so, so long until the next Animal Crossing game, I'm really hoping Cozy Grove 2 can kind of fill this void. Next up is Garden Life, a cozy sim. Now this is confirmed to be coming to the Nintendo Switch, albeit a little bit later than it's coming to every other console, but I will say, this is probably one of the cozy games I'm the most worried about seeing how it runs on the Nintendo Switch, because these trailers look absolutely gorgeous, and there is no way the Switch is going to play this game like that. Either way though, I'm pretty excited about the concept, as this sees you grow the garden of your dreams, based on techniques gardeners use in real life. Which I love, because I'm pretty new to owning plants, I've lost quite a few plants in the last few months from just not taking care of them, so I'm really hoping this game can teach me a few things. This will see you do anything from planting the seeds, making sure you've left enough room between them, you also water, clip them, fertilize, weed them, and protect them from pests as well all the while watching your garden as it passes through each season. You also have a bit of flexibility when playing this game. There's a creative mode that lets you do whatever you want, but there's also a story mode that lets you take charge of an abandoned community garden and see you restore it. I love the idea of this mode as it will see you complete different tasks for your neighbors and reward you with new things like new tools, seeds, or even new areas to garden. As I often struggle when games give me no direction because I just, I don't know what to do, so I love that they implemented a story mode as well. Next is Fields of Mystria. Okay, I know I said 2024 is the year of variety for cozy gamers, and this is a farming sim which we have seen a lot of in 2023 but i love all the different elements that this introduces and i think it's just going to be a little bit different this will see you return the idyllic town back to its former glory after an earthquake because not only did the earthquake cause havoc to the town's people and the town itself, it also caused magic to begin to flow throughout the land. Although this isn't necessarily a great thing, it does allow you to use magic to aid you in your everyday farming sim life. Now this does have all the classic farming sim things to do, 
But I do love that magic is not only something you can utilize, but a major part of the story as well. And seeing as it said it's a spiritual successor to the farm sim RPGs of the 90s, I'm really excited where the story is going to take us. Then we have Fishbowl. Now I not only got to play this game when I was at Gamescom, but also meet the wonderful developers. And this is truly a cozy game with a difference that I really hope comes to the Nintendo Switch. This is a coming of age story told over the course of a single month and tells the tale of Aloe, a 21 year old woman living in a new city by herself after bagging a new job. This is a beautiful story about living in isolation, friendships and how to live with grief after the passing of her grandmother. This is a beautiful mix between narrative storytelling, mini games and also sort of cozy gaming like chores. Like for example, you help her do her job, which is editing videos. Sometimes when you play a game, you just know it has something extra in it that makes it really special. And that was the vibe I got when I played the demo. I think this is going to be a truly beautiful game and I can't wait to get my hands on it. Next is Discounty. Okay, last time I included this on my channel, I had so many comments asking why I'd include a game about capitalism as a cozy game. But you know what? I stand by it because this game can be cozy if you make the right decisions. It can also not be cozy. It's all up to you. Their fate is in your hands. The way I like to describe this is being a Jojo Mart sim because this sees you own your very own supermarket after your aunt brings her to a rundown harbour town to be in charge of her grocery store. Not only will this see you organise and restock shelves, you will also man the tills, you'll be able to make local trade deals and make friends with all the villagers as well. But you do all this while also trying to build a business empire. And as your business grows, so will the villagers' resentment. As often, making big profits comes at the expense of others. But to be successful, you'll need to make sure everyone leaves the store happy. And to do this, you'll need to talk to the villagers to make sure your shop is stocked with everything that they want and need. You'll also need to keep the floor clean, keep the shelves stocked, and ring up each and every customer without making them wait in line too long. The thing I really adore about this is it's a cozy game that doesn't glorify everyday life. Things you do have real life consequences and honestly a cozy game with a bit more stakes might be a little bit more interesting next let's talk about the brand new story of seasons games now we don't exactly know what these are we just know that they're coming they were announced and kind of spoken about a little bit in a few youtube videos all we know so far is they definitely look to be shaking up the story of seasons genre which is a good thing because it desperately needs it. Talking about Story of Seasons is such a tricky thing because I love and respect everything the developers have done for the farming sim genre. The Story of Seasons devs are the original Harvest Moon developers. These guys are the ones that made the farming sim genre. But the issue is, I feel like this is also holding them back. They're trying to stay so true to the farming sim genre they created that they're afraid to go with what the farming sim genre has become. And every year that goes by and every new Story of Seasons game we see on the Nintendo Switch, I feel like I've watched them fall further and further behind. And I just want to play a Story of Seasons game that doesn't feel outdated from the moment I start playing it. And I really hope 2024 is the year that they deliver. Next, I want to talk about a game that just says coming to consoles, but I am too excited to not mention its existence. And this is Tales of the Shire. Now, one thing you might not know about me is I'm actually a huge Lord of the Rings fan. In fact, I spent one of my summer holidays at school School, trying to learn elvish it didn't go well but i tried and that's all that matters now we know literally nothing about this game other than it being described as a cozy hobbit game coming out on consoles and pc sometime in 2024 but from my cozy gaming senses i think this is probably going to be some sort of life sim now there are a few things i really want to know about this like first of all when is this set in the lord of the rings timeline and also Will we see any of like the big main characters in the game at all? Or is it going to be set in a completely different era? We don't know what, but either way, I'm excited to find out. Next up is Bloomtown A Different Story. If you're looking for a unique type of cozy game, then this will most definitely have you covered. This is a narrative JRPG with turn-based battle mechanics, monster taming, but also a social RPG set in the 1960s Americana world. But that part is not what interested me. 
What interests me is the story, because as you guys know, I am a sucker for an incredible story. This follows Emily and her younger brother Chester as they go on a summer holiday to their grandpa's cozy and quiet town. That was until children began going missing, and nightmares started becoming a little bit too real. But thankfully, you won't be alone when taking on these creatures, as not only do you have friends that could help you with your turn-based battles, you can also call upon your inner demons and either capture ones to fight as well. And if this isn't enough, you can even fuse these creatures together, meaning there's endless possibilities. Now, this does seem like a game where you're racing against the clock to try and save the world, as it really emphasizes the fact that you need to figure out the best way to make use of your time. But I'm kind of hoping that similar to Moonstone Island, that although that game is against the clock, they gave you an option to turn it off so you can enjoy it a little bit more leisurely. And honestly, if I could have one hope for cozy games in 2024, is that they start having the type of story that are RPGs are known for. Give me a cozy game with full on cutscenes, with a story, with character arcs. I want to sob. I want to cry. I want to be invested in a cozy gaming story. Next up is Puff Pals. Now again, I'm going to be living in my delusional land to mention this coming out in 2024. I think we might see early access come to the PC in 2024. Realistically, I don't see this coming to the Switch anytime this year. And I actually think that'll be a good thing because I think this will be a game much better suited to the Switch 2 rather than the Nintendo Switch. This is a life sim all about reliving the childhood joy of experiencing and discovering something new for the first time, allowing you to befriend adorable neighbors, farm a host of different crops, decorate and explore the stunning landscape. All the while allowing you to collect everything from artifacts, fungus, stones and lore to add to your little booklet. Now this raised an awful lot of money on Kickstarter, which means they're planning to pack a ton of content into this, including one of the things I'm very excited to see, which is owning your very own shop. Personally, I think shop sims, cafe sims are such an underutilized part of cozy gaming. So I can't wait to see what they do with this. And I hope they really lean into this sort of genre as I love a good life sim, but I just want more. Next, we have Cozy Noughts. Again, this is a farming sim, but with a little bit of a difference, as this involves colonizing an unknown planet. And don't worry, this has already got a confirmed Switch port coming out later down the road. In this, you land on a random planet, and you need to build absolutely everything you want and need from scratch, which means you need to explore the planet and also gather new resources as well. But that's not all you need to do. You also have to find a way to transport these resources back to your base, even going so far as allowing you to make a fully automated production line. Now, don't worry, this also has all the classics like decorating, crafting, fishing, bug catching, and even dungeons to explore. This just seems to be a really cool mix of live sim elements, but also management-like mechanics as well. Next is Grave Seasons. Now, this may not have a trailer, but it doesn't stop me being ridiculously excited for this entire concept. And if you are a fan of farming sims and murder mysteries, this will be the perfect game for you. This will see you move into a brand new town to start your very own farm. And not only will you have to care for your crops and meet the locals and get to know them, you'll also be tasked with finding out which one of the locals you've just met is a serial killer. Yeah. It's one of those games. <laughs> and this whole aspect makes the friendship and the romance side of the game incredibly interesting because you're going to have to get to know people, talk to people to figure out who is the one running around murdering people. And the wild part is it could even wind up to be your farming sim spouse. But the real thing that's going to make this game stand out is the fact that the murderer is not the same each time you play the game. Which means you can't cheat, you can't find the right answer, it's literally just up to you to decide who you think the murderer is. And as someone who has been obsessed with watching The Traitors lately, I can really see myself getting into this. <laughs> Next is Katori Academy, again confirmed to be coming to the Nintendo Switch. And this sees you attend classes, train your magical skills, all in the hope of becoming a wizard apprentice. This will see you attend botany classes, potions, charms class, and even be able to get your very own pet that you can customize. But like all good witches and wizards, you'll need to do all of this and also save the world at the same time. Because naturally, it becomes down to a child to save the world once again, which is something both the wizarding universe and Pokemon universe share in common. I will never understand why adults aren't the ones who can save the world in these genres, but you know, I adore everything about this game and I'm very excited for it. 
next up is Momento, which has only been confirmed for the PC so far, but I truly hope it's getting a Nintendo Switch port, as this is like unpacking, but with a bit of a difference. This is essentially a room decorator, where the items you choose to keep and discard determines your journey. And considering this has multiple different endings, there's a lot of replay value to it. As honestly, my only complaint about unpacking was that it was just too short. So I love the fact that I could play this again and again and see where I end up. Next is Pine Hearts, which is a cozy narrative adventure game set in a caravan park that tells the story of the loss of a family member with beautiful care as you rediscover memories as you play. This game is focused on puzzles, not combat, and you'll find yourself making new friends, unlocking tools and abilities as you go as well. I personally find games like this can be really, really healing, especially if you're going through a similar thing. So I can't wait to see what they do with this kind of story and with this kind of narrative. Then we have Loftier, which is described as being a cozy solo punk MMO. And this is one of the cozy games to keep an eye out for, as this allows you to come together with friends to build a home, farm and work together to sustainably build the area back up. One thing I'm looking forward to the most though is the ability to go on group quests and take part of big server events as well. All the while focusing on sustainable living and showing us what small changes we can make to our lives to help the planet out just a little. Then we have Tiny Bookshop. Again, this hasn't been fully confirmed for the Nintendo Switch, but I am manifesting it as it will be right at home. This is a narrative management game where you leave everything behind to set up a tiny bookshop by the sea. And this game is a complete vibe. This will see you travel to picturesque locations as you run your very own bookshop. But there's way more to the game than just stocking books. As each day your bookstore is visited by locals, who in time you'll get to know their wants and needs when it comes to reading, but you also get to know all about them as well. This will allow you to stock your bookshop with books that the locals want to read. But the way in which you interact with the locals will actually shape not only the town story, but also your own as well. I love the fact that this has a bit of everything. There's narrative storytelling, management aspects, but also the ability to decorate your store both inside and out. When you get me to picture a cozy game, this is something I would think of. I think the vibes are immaculate and I'm very excited to get to play it. Back to another farming sim and next is Moonlight Peaks. Now this is a little bit different to other farming sims as in this you play as a vampire. So this means you wake up when the sun has set and you go to bed when the sun rises. But not only will you have the vampire teeth, you'll also be able to transform into different animals as well, each of which with their own benefits. And not only will you be able to do your classic farming sim stuff, you'll also be able to brew potions and learn spells as well. But the thing that's got me really excited is the fact that you're not the only supernatural being around. As the town is filled with werewolves, witches, mermaids and more, with the relationships and dating seeming to be a large focus on the game. This has a lot of what you know and love in farming sims, but also a little bit extra, like you can brew potions and learn spells, the crops are supernatural, and the decorating items are just what you'd expect from a vampire game. But one thing that really surprised me when I played the demo for the game is how much fun the decorating actually was. It seems to be very reminiscent of the Animal Crossing Happy Home Paradise, and I'm truly here for it. Now we know this is coming to the Nintendo Switch, but chances are it will come to the Switch later than it comes to PC. Either way, super excited. And finally, we have Sugar Dew Island. And this is actually a game I've only just discovered, but I am very excited for. As not only is this a farming sim and an adorable one at that, you also get to take care of your very own farm shop, which you get to supply all the goods for, negotiate the prices and even decorate. And alongside all of this, you'll also have quests to upgrade the town as well. And I honestly can't wait to see how this runs on the Switch. That's it for my 25 cozy games to watch out for in 2024. Let me know which one is your favorite or if I missed a game high up on your list. And if you think I'm missing a few of the big 2024 releases, you might want to check out this video here.